I am the product of my environment. Because people in this community lived just for basketball. Jermaine O'Neal. We sold season tickets. Yo, that's unheard of in high school. It's pretty difficult. Being brought up in some areas I was brought up in, that's okay. I'm, I'm gonna use basketball as a tool to get out of this area. Somebody had to write a story on where the person should make it and experience all these different things, going through the pain, the anger, and the suffering that I've had. Then at the end of the story, we say, nah, he didn't make it. Before the deals, Before the fame, just the game. Jermaine O'Neal. This is the story of Jermaine O'Neal. Back in the day, Jermaine O'Neal was the best big man to come out of South Carolina. Jermaine basically just kept growing and growing until the point where we started making the All Star team. He's a double double guy. You know, he's long, he's athletic, he's quick. Guy that play inside and outside. He punished dudes on the offensive end. Defensively, he's gonna bang with you. I mean, there's certain players that have it, and there's certain players that don't. And he's right up the top with the best of them. If sports is all about statistics, Jermaine is loaded with them. 1996 McDonald's All-American, drafted right out of high school, and of course, a five-time NBA All-Star. Jermaine O'Neal is the man, but what about the boy inside the man? On October 13th, 1978. Angela Jones gave birth to Jermaine O'Neal in Columbia, South Carolina. Jermaine's father left before he was born. He had to overcome not having a, his real dad in his life. That was, his, that was a battle for him. He saw some sides in the streets. He saw what the street life was like. Amidst the gorgeous backdrop of the South, Columbia, South Carolina is not without its share of many of American city problems. I grew up in Columbia. There's some good things, and there's some bad things. You're always going to have, you know, you're going to have certain violence. You know, obviously, you got to be educated to really be successful in life. And when I was, you know, the area that I grew up in, it wasn't a whole lot of that. Not, not a lot of opportunities, great opportunities for the blacks. Well, that thing from, um, as I said, we lost our culture. We had babies having babies. It's either, you know, you have a really good upbringing, you know, with your family or you was in the streets. We had 15-year-olds trying to raise kids. Parenting skills were lost. Very few that were, were getting a, the good upbringing in the area that I, that I grew up in. And now those kids have turned to violence, the gangs. Statistically, for its size, Columbia nearly triples the nation's average in violent crimes. We believe if crime has occurred, we, in some sense, our community and us have failed. But we're really doing a lot about that. This community embraces the, 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 the understanding that sports really helps mold good citizens. Statistics show that boys raised without fathers have a higher rate of violent crime. There are some people there that really try to lure him into the streets. And that wasn't, in my estimation, something very hard to do at that point with Jermaine. I've been through the suspensions. I've been through the fights. I've been through all of that. And it was just really because at the end of the day, the father figure wasn't there. A black mother with two sons. You need a father. It was a very painful uh, area for me as far as growing up. You know, I grew up and didn't quite understand why I wasn't good enough to have a father. And I didn't know that until after he got grown, how painful it was for him to go through life as a child without his blood father. Jermaine's mom was forced to play two roles in the household, raising two sons on her own. Growing up as kids, we know we didn't have everything. You know, during Christmas times, our mother had to go to like, you know, Salvation Army to get toys. You know, you want to you have all the, all the things that your friends have, you know, the games, the clothes, the shoes. And it just wasn't a situation where my mother was able to, you know, to really afford it. So it wasn't good for us. I taught them, the little boys, if something happened to me, they always stay close to each other and, and they are bond. Without enough money for school supplies, the O'Neill brothers were too ashamed to show up at school. We were in the woods and sat in the woods literally all day, the first full day of school, because we were just we just didn't we didn't have it. I said, if I ever get a hold of some money, we gonna we gonna have some of the nicer things. You know, at that particular point, it seemed like it was so far fetched. Uh, it was just all dreams because if it, somebody had to write a poll on our lives, we never supposed to made it. I mean, you know, my mother didn't really get a chance to really, you know, be there, be there. She was there, but she had to work too. The first time I actually started 
cleaning and cooking. I was like 12, 13. My brother had to really uh, grow up a little bit faster and kind of show me the ways. And many times I was just drained and stressed and many nights I didn't sleep because I was trying to figure out how I was going to pay this and Robin Peter to pay Paul. It made me angry. It made me real angry. Not having a father in the house affected Jermaine in, in some bad ways. You know, Jermaine had rage. My anger was a real problem. You know, growing up, I would just do things. He would lash out. He would actually literally just fight. He couldn't say anything about his mama. I mean, he would bust nose up. You know, I was getting put out of school. You know, I was running the streets. Just in time, Jermaine's mother met a new man in her life, Moses Ocean. He was this man came from nowhere, and he chose to ask me to be his wife and and, and, and the father of my children. And uh, he was a role model, and then he was a provider. He took care of them like they were their children. But tragically, Moses Ocean soon passed away due to cancer. After experiencing the loss of another father, Jermaine would have to shift his focus to something he could control. Next up, Jermaine makes a bold statement. He said, hey, Glimp, I'm going to be the best player you ever had. As Jermaine began his high school years, he was met with discipline he wasn't used to. I had a goal to make these kids better citizens, productive citizens. In our high school, we had people, he didn't allow to play basketball because they didn't want to be the right way. And they had more talent than the guys that were playing. We were the epitome of being a gentleman. We were a class act. And he does a great job with these players. Um, they have so much respect and love for him. We never got technical fouls. We never got in an opponent's face and whooped at him. He's a very different coach. I mean, he was really an icon for young people in that community. He really cared for the kids, and I think that was one of the most important aspects of his job as a coach. I knew, first and foremost, that he cared more about me as a person than he did as a player. He was a third parent, or second parent, as it may be, to some of these kids as well. They develop a father and son relationship, and begin was love hate, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He had a high expectations for him. Just because you were an outstanding basketball player didn't mean you could come in and, and ignore his rules. You no, know, my, my pants wasn't up on my waist. I had an earring. I had, you know, I had everything that he didn't like. He followed them in the classroom. He made them bring him their report cards. He made them bring their interims. I want everybody to school tomorrow. And I'm not practice tomorrow. If you broke one of his rules, you were gone. Statistically, boys without fathers drop out of school three times the rate of their peers. But Jermaine was determined not to be a statistic, but to be a star. He told me, he said, when I get to Eau Claire, I'm going to be a star. And I told him, me being his brother, I told him he wouldn't, because we had too many stars at Eau Claire. And as I was getting to my car, he came up and he said, hey, Glimp. I'm going to play for you, and I'm going to be the best player to ever play for you. So I said, what do you call me? He said, I said, hey, Glimp. And he just kind of looked at me like, you know. I said, well, young man, to you, my name is Coach Glimp. I'm Mr. Glimp. Now, if you can't refer to me in either way, you don't have to speak to me at all. And uh, that was a learning experience for him. Oh, your eyes just light up when you see a person like that walk in, you know, walk into the gym because, hey, as a ninth grader, if he's 6'4", I guarantee you, look at his feet. He said, oh, you got big feet. You're going to be a good 6'9". Coach Lewis Dreer. He was uh, really the pioneer of Jermaine O'Neal because I wasn't very good in basketball. I couldn't really get the, my, my footwork down and my drop steps and everything. I used to make him dance a lot. I used to make him, I said, hey, if you're going to be a, be a player, you got to be able to be able to move and be able to be smooth on the court. And he literally 
pull me aside and dance with me. And I thought it was crazy. I'm like, nah, I'm not, I'm not dancing with you. I want to be able to go out there and do things on, you know, on the dance floor. So you got to be able to do the same thing on the basketball court. So he just took my hand and we just danced and danced and danced. And he did this every single day. Once the playoffs arrived, Jermaine was moved up to varsity in a rare choice by Coach Glimp. He was the future. He was just like a sponge. He took in everything Coach Drew tried to teach him. Yeah, there's one thing he could do is his first year is block shots. Blocking shots with his left hand. A type of guy like that, you know, he keep the offensive guy scared to go up, knowing that he could go up with both hands and block a shot. He broke his right hand when he was in elementary school, and his mother praised her, made him learn to write with his left hand. So he had to do a lot of things with his left hand. So now he's almost ambidextrous. Even when he plays on offense, he got right hand, left hand hooks. And most people think he's left handed because he does so many things with his left hand. We saw him involved into not just a great player, but a better person. Jermaine would now be on Eau Claire's main dance floor, the Rock Pit, known as one of the toughest gyms to play in South Carolina. Oh gosh, it's insane. Everybody is so intimidated by the rock pit. Well, it was kind of rough. You better bring your A game. You know, every night you went to the game, you knew you was going to win. Wow, noisy, hot, and the crowd just let up on you. A lot of times you had unruly fans. I can remember one of the things that our team would do when the other team would come, they would meet them at the bus, and they start pulling out, that's my man, that's my man, who they want to defend. If the team didn't leave, in good fashion, they were gonna rock their bus. And that was always standing room only. They were breaking through the ceiling. It was small, it was hot, and between us, I think that's something that George did on purpose. <laughs> George would turn up the heat. I think he got that from the Boston Celtics. All right, BITD, back in the day, we came in and the gym was overbearingly hot. There was some malfunction with the thermostat, so we couldn't turn the heat off, and the guys were almost passing out. So I said, hey, we're going to use that. So every game, I would come over to this corner, and I would take a broomstick, because, you know, I'm TDS, too darn short, and I would turn it up. We sweated everybody out. If you wasn't conditioned well, you wasn't going to last. And if a team came in one point guard, by the middle of the third quarter, he was done. He couldn't stand that heat. Oh, of course, it's dirty, coach. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. And the fans would always say, Coach, turn up the heat. Jermaine would get his first taste of victory as the Shamrocks took the state championship his freshman year. He was on the team that actually won the championship. That was great. That was real great for him. The guys were so focused. Um, they gave me the opportunity to watch some of the older guys and their leadership. I was overjoyed. He was very emotional. It was just an exciting time. I said, okay, now you know, I gotta, you know, now I gotta take this team, you know, to the next level. And I and I've always been blessed to have you know, some great talent with me. Next up, Jermaine's father would pay him an unexpected visit. Like I never really saw him before. It wasn't good at all. We started school his 10th grade year. Yeah, we could see it, because he had really, really taken his game to another level. I went to talk to George during a practice, one of the preseason practices, and he pointed him out. He pointed him over, pointed over at Jermaine and said, that's going to be the best player I've ever had at Eau Claire High School. And I was like, no way. I mean, he just had a string of outstanding players that went and got Division I scholarships. Turned out he was right. <laughs> He went from being a nobody to somebody, you know, overnight. It was insane. <laughs> the girls were all over him all the time. And one day I saw Jermaine leaving campus. When he got to the gate and I was near the gate, I looked and the trunk of the car was, the trunk was up. And I was suspicious. And he came by and was like, you know, what are you doing? I was like, I'm not doing anything. 
So I walk over and spoke to him and slammed the trunk down. And a voice came out of the trunk. You know, when you're young, you just you just kind of go with some of the dumbest things. And what I suspected was true. There was a young lady in the trunk. He told, he told Coach Clump, and Coach Clump had a, a, a fond way of making you not ever want to do something ever again. <laughs> Assistant Principal Lucius Frierson had a little game of his own. He was the type of person that would uh, try to so-called teach us about women. Man, you got to get this a girlfriend. You got to get one girl. And he just kind of pulled me aside. It's like, you know, you got to really you know, make sure you treat her like a lady. And I took his advice, and it worked out for me. The Shamrocks blew through his sophomore season and picked up another state championship. With Jermaine's success and national recognition, also came an unexpected visit from his father. And then you know, he was booming. You know, he was talking about NBA, this and that. So he wanted to come back in his life and pick up, try to pick up the chips, but it was too late. I'm in a particular hotel while I was doing a particular party. That was a, that was the strangest thing. I've never I've never seen him before. I've seen some younger younger pictures of him, but this guy was older. But he was like an older version of my brother. So, you know, I, I see him, he's coming up to me, and you know, he's, you know, he, his first words is, how you doing, son? I mean, it kind of you know, blew me away, and I'm just like, you know, wow. But then his second word was, your mom's is keeping you from me. And that was one of the situations where I had to really stay composed because I wanted to knock his head off. You see what I'm saying? Because I, I know that my mother wanted help. You know, I know my mom's worked hard to, you know, to, to try to make sure that our sons had the best they had. I had a bunch of my friends with me. They just had to calm me down. And I just like, yo, you're not my father. Because like I said, a father is a guy that's there for his family. That's there to raise his kids, teach them right or wrong. You know, that's a father. The molding of a boy into becoming a man in this case was a three-part process built on bringing peace where anger once reigned. Jermaine is like a son to me, and he knows that. But I have a lot of sons in this world, but he's one of them. Junior, going to my senior year, I was up for a award. I said, you know, you, you know, get a suit and put on your suit and tie. Both of them looked at me, they looked down. I said, what's wrong? Didn't have a suit. But just to show you what people are and how people are in this community, I got on the phone and I made a call to a guy named Perry Dozier. Perry's 6'10". Coach Glett bought him and introduced me to him and uh, he said he just needs, needs a suit. And so I went in my closet and I laid down about five suits on my couch and I told him, I said, he has five suits, he has five dress shirts and five pair of shoes, pick one. And I just had to, I had the toughest time picking because all of them was nice. You know, I've never really, you know, I've never owned a suit, so I thought all of them were nice. And he picked all five of them. <laughs> so, and I just, I couldn't say no to him. Jermaine never forgot that. He never forgot that. Those suits would get plenty of wear as Jermaine racked up his high school accolades. SC Player of the Year, Mr. Basketball, South Carolina, USA Today, All USA Basketball Team. All state first team. When the game is on the line, who will get that big rebound, who will make the big shot, who will take the big shot, not just make it, but have the courage to take it. Well, this was Jermaine. While Claire was getting such a reputation, they had to hold Jermaine's junior state championship game at the Carolina Coliseum. Jermaine O'Neal. Second half, I just reeled. I might have rolled off like 20 straight points. Three Pete. Eau Claire wins 86-49. Three state championships in a row brought in heavy recruiters from the biggest universities in the nation. Almost every team in the country recruited me. So Jermaine was working hard to get his SAT scores up to their standards. Coach Glimp, after every Friday night game, early Saturday morning, either he was picking me up, or my mother was taking me to the SAT prep class. So I ended up needing, I think it might have been like 20, 30 more points, total points, to, to be eligible to play my freshman year in college. Next up, Jermaine makes the biggest decision of his life. You know, people say what they say, but they truly don't know the story.
When Jermaine hit his senior year, he was staking his name in the Eau Claire history books with an all-time high, 397 blocks in four years. He was also invited to play in the prestigious McDonald's All-American game. Jermaine O'Neal. When Jermaine went to the 12th grade, of course, expe expectations were so high and great that we won the last three years. What it would be like if we do it for the fourth time. But Eau Claire would lose in the playoffs in a two-point upset. SH, stuff happens. That's not the word I want to use. That's how it is in basketball. Some nights you, you have it and other nights you don't. That particular night, we just didn't have it. Cry like a baby. You have the thrill of victory, dagger the defeat. There's very few people that comes out of high school that said they only lost once in their high school career in, in, in the state playoffs. You grow up when you are down and have to come back up. Jermaine's time to get back up came soon as he prepared for his final SAT test. You know, I've been taking this particular test at one particular site the previous two times. All of a sudden, I get to the site, and they say, oh, you're not registered here. You know, so I'm like, you know, I'm kind of thrown for a loop. So we go to another site, which is maybe five, 10 minutes down the road. But I get there, they say, no, not here either. So we tried a third site, You're not here. Turns out, in a mix-up, Jermaine's school had him scheduled at a site nearly 20 miles away. Those would be 30 points Jermaine would never score, as that was the last possible date to take the test. It was a, it was a, it was a hard thing to swallow, but I truly believe everything in my life to this day that's happened to me has really just been able to teach me about how I should absorb the blows, how I should be able to get up you know, be knocked down, get up, that's my stuff, I'm gonna keep going. To look at my mom's situation, he knew that he had to make something happen. You know, I got my brother, I got my mother, I got my grandmother, I got Coach Glenn, I got so many people that's really depending on me to, to really keep going and keep striving for the best. As we had a pressure, you had to man up. And that's, um, that's the reason why I made my decision to go pro out of high school. And I knew all along that I wasn't gonna go, I, was, I can go from anywhere between 10th and 17th. This is my life right here. I got 17 chances to accomplish a, a lifelong dream. Jermaine O'Neal became the youngest NBA draft pick ever at 18 years and one month old when the Portland Trailblazers picked him at number 17. I can't even, I can't even describe the feeling because, you know, like I said, I've been through so much. His mom cried, uh, I think he cried, and just, everybody was just happy, so happy for him. You know, if I had to, if somebody had to write a story on whether a person should make it and experience all these different things, go through all these different things, then you, the story at the end of the story would say, nah, he didn't make it. But Jermaine did make it. And after four years, mostly spent on the bench with Portland, he finally got his opportunity to shine with the Indiana Pacers. Statistically, boys without fathers drop out of school three times the rate of their peers, have a higher rate of violent crime, have a higher rate of unemployment, but Jermaine would not be a statistic. Jermaine O'Neal beat the odds. I've lived this life. You know I know what you have to do to be successful. I can use my story at any point, you know, to tell another kid that I'm into, I'll go in to tell a group of kids that, you know, it is, a, you do have a chance. Jermaine O'Neal as a person, outstanding. Wonderful. Respectful. Generous. Humble. Competitive. Awesome. A man. That's the story of Jermaine O'Neill. Classic, class, majestic. <laughs>